Oh, give the Lord that hand of praise right now. God is great. God is great. And God is greatly to be praised. Amen, amen. You may be seated tonight. Wow, what, what, a, what an introduction. What an, what an introduction. It's introductions, uh, Sister Wilson, it's introductions like that that remind me of, uh, of, of a man who had died and his wife and little boy were sitting on the front row of the church. And the pastor was saying all of these flowery words about the deceased. And he was, he was putting it on the deceased, deceased like Brother Voskis was putting it on me tonight. It got so deep that finally the mother punched her son in the side and said, Boy, go up there and see if that's your daddy in that casket there. <laughs> so uh, I felt like waiting around seeing who he was going to introduce. But I want you to know that on the behalf of my wife and I, we are absolutely honored beyond words uh, to be selected to be a part of the 70th anniversary of the Mississippi District of the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a momentous, what a momentous occasion. Uh, 70, 70 years, seven decades of continuous, continuous, apostolic doctrine and apostolic revival. There's no doubt in my mind that North Mississippi will be judged by a higher standard on Judgment Day for the opportunity that's been given to this part of Mississippi to be able to hear the Word of God and to feel the power of God that is here. We absolutely, we absolutely um, commend you on this uh, accomplishment. I say to uh, Brother Porterfield and the district board here, you won't have a more revival, harvest-minded district board anywhere like you have in the Mississippi district. Their, their minds is on revival. Their minds are up on, on harvest. Great legacy, a great legacy that's in um, Mississippi. Um, Mississippi is home to several of our former general superintendents of which I would give honor to tonight. I wouldn't be here without them and that's Bishop Raymond Bishop. Bishop Bishop's how we call it. Bishop Raymond Bishop. And uh, his great wife and his family. I give you honor. I give you honor. You were... Uh, Back in the, um, the late 70s and early 80s, you were my very first general superintendent that, that I ever had. I evangelized for a while, and I wasn't in any organization. And uh, I preached revival for a man, I don't know if you all know him or not, over here in a little community called Blue Mountain, Mississippi. His name was uh, J.L. Pipkin. And I preached him a revival. And while at the revival, I asked him about different organizations. I asked him about several different organizations. And he said, uh, Brother Kenny, he said, uh, I am about my organization like I am of God. If there be another, I know not any. And uh, he convinced me uh, to join the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Bishop Steve Wilson and Sister Wilson. What great apostolic examples they have been to the ALJC. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. I sincerely, I sincerely mean that tonight. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart. Um, the wonderful people here, the churches here, is just outstanding. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm just a little bit um, in awe tonight of the presence and the power of God. Don't you love Jesus? Don't you just love Jesus? Aren't you thankful somebody brought you the message of who Jesus is? Brother Voskis, what an honor it is to serve with him. Um, God has positioned the ALJC. We're about to see unreal growth. We are presently seeing 
just phenomenal things that's happening across, across our fellowship. 38 years ago tonight, 38 years ago tonight, I was Kenny Carpenter, and there was a little uh, rehearsal going on, and I stood beside a young lady by the name of Penny Bennett. And 38 years ago tonight was our wedding rehearsal. And tomorrow we're going to celebrate 38 wonderful, happy camp meeting, preaching anniversary. Come on, would you stand? I want them to see. I want them to see how pretty you are. Would you stand, Sister Carpenter? Would you stand? Thank God. Hey, that's all right. That's what it's all about, too, ain't it? We can multitask. We can multitask. Go ahead. We got. We, we rehearsed our wedding 38 years ago. She's joining the bride tonight. She's taking on the name tonight. Oh, that's all right. You may be seated. You may be seated. I, I, uh, I appreciate the, the work of God that's going forth here. And uh, on behalf of my wife and I, we, we brought a little gift to the Mississippi district. Yes. We brought a little gift here. You know, 70 years ago, I guarantee you, 70 years ago, wherever the gathering was at, I gather, guarantee you, if you just set those down there, there was a lot of these right here. I guarantee you there was a lot. I see a couple of them here tonight. But more than likely, they probably advertised Fred's grocery market or a funeral home. But we had 70 of these made, and they simply say the 70th anniversary of the ALJC Mississippi District. And, uh, you know, although there may not be a whole lot of these here, there still is a lot of the moving of the power and the presence of God. We're not in a tent anymore. We're not in a brush arbor anymore. We're not somewhere just barely struggling anymore. God has prospered the people of the Mississippi District of the ALJC. God has prospered us with numbers. God has prospered us with buildings. But there's one thing in the midst of all the prosperity. We haven't forgotten how to worship and praise and magnify the King of Kings. I'm glad this is still moving. I'm glad we're still in the midst of a move of God. If you've not, if you're not already standing, if you'd stand with me tonight, I um, I'm gonna tell you something. I don't know when Bishop Wilson is preaching, and I don't know when Brother Vasquez is preaching. And I don't know when Brother Poole is preaching. But please come back to hear them preach, All right, I'm just going to do my best to get on base tonight. That's all. I'm just going to try to get on on base tonight. They're going to bless you. That I'm sure of. If you have your Bibles and would turn with me tonight to the book of Exodus chapter 26. And I'm not going to apologize, but I'm going to read several verses of Scripture tonight. Exodus chapter 26 and verse number 15. I'm not going to apologize. I'm going to read several verses of Scripture. Elder Johnny James said, if you'll read a lot of Scripture when you get up to preach, even if you don't preach good, at least they got the Word. All right. So I'm going to give you some Word. God says in Thou shalt make boards for the tabernacle of Shittim wood standing up. Ten cubits shall be the length of a board, and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth of one board. Two tenions shall there be in one board set in order against one another. Thus shalt thou make for all the boards of the tabernacle. 
And thou shalt make the boards of the tabernacle for the tabernacle, 20 boards on the south side, south. Thou shalt make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards, <clears throat> two sockets under one board for his two tenions, two sockets under the other board for his two tenions. And for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side shall there be 20 boards. And there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, two sockets under the other board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward, thou shalt make six boards. And two boards shalt thou make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they shall be coupled together beneath and they shall be coupled together above the head of it using one ring. Thus shall it be for them both. They shall be for the two corners. And they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver. Sixteen sockets, two sockets under one board, two sockets under another board. Thou shalt make bars of shittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle and for the two sides westward. And the middle bar in the midst of the board shall reach from end to end. Thou shalt overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold for places for the bars. And thou shalt overlay the bars with gold. And thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to to the fashion therewith which was showed thee in the mount. I want to minister tonight what I feel on my heart. The apostolic church structure. The apostolic church structure. I'm so glad for the church. I'm so glad we've got a place to come when things fall apart and I'm so thankful we've got a place to come when we're on the mountaintop I am glad for the apostolic church structure if you would lay your Bible down and if you would lift your voices along with your hands ask the Lord to sit down on us here for a few moments ask the Lord to come down and ask the Lord to be up on us tonight would you lift up your voice right now Lord I praise you Lord, I magnify you. Seventy years. Oh, seventy years, God. I thank you tonight, Lord. Oh, Holy Ghost, sit down on us in this service. Oh, Holy Ghost, the church was your idea and your master plan. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God. Anoint me. Anoint my mind. Anoint my heart. Anoint my voice. Anoint me and strengthen me tonight, God. I'll give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands unto the Lord as you're being seated. God is great and greatly to be praised. I must admit to you tonight and tell you that the tabernacle in the Old Testament is my favorite subject to study. I have a tendency, and if I could... Uh, if I could go overboard, if there be such a thing as going overboard on any subject in the Bible, I do believe it would be it would be the tabernacle. The tabernacle in the Old Testament is rich with Bible typology. Plan of salvation can be found in the tabernacle. In the tabernacle can be found the oneness, the oneness of the Godhead in the tabernacle. Every piece of furniture. Every piece of furniture down to how many pieces is in the furniture can be tied as a type of Jesus Christ. I remember Brother Azar, as they studied the tabernacle in the Bible school there in Lebanon, he said one day they got stumped. They were, they were trying to find Jesus' name in the laver, the laver of water. And they were trying their best to tie the name of Jesus uh, to the labor because we believe that the labor represented baptism, but the class there wanted to see the name in typology. Brother Zar said they took a break and several of the students began to pray. 
And finally one student lifted his voice and he said, I found it, I found it. That labor in the Old Testament was filled with that rock that followed them through the Old Testament. It was filled with water from that rock. That's where they would have gotten the water to fill the labor was from the rock. The Apostle Paul said, and that rock that followed them was Christ. Amen. So they found water baptism in the labor there. And aren't you thankful? I'm so thankful for that. You know that God has always put what He loves in a structured environment. Anything God loves, He puts it in a In a structured environment. Why does he put it in a structured environment? Not to punish it. Not to restrict it. But to nourish it. And to protect it. Was it good enough that God just made an earth? Was it good enough that God just made the sun, the moon, the grass? Was it good enough that God just made an earth? God made something that he loved. That was man. And God made a garden. God made a structured place. And there God placed man in this structured place. We are certainly living in a day that we're seeing as never before the demantling, the destruction of any kind of structure. Many schools today in America, 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4 anymore. We're living in a day that, that, that structure, any kind of absolute structure is being taken apart and up isn't up anymore and down isn't down anymore and male isn't male anymore and female isn't female anymore. And, and, and we're just seeing things just... Uh, we're just seeing things taken apart. We're seeing a, a structure that's being taken apart. But God so loved Israel that He not only gave Israel deliverance. I thank God that He gives us deliverance. Thank God that He not only gave Israel deliverance, but He also took Moses to the mountain and gave him the law and He also gave him the plans of a tabernacle. Because any delivered people ought to seek after the law of God to live right. If you are delivered, you want a law. If you have been set free, you don't want to go back to what you've been brought out of. I want a law to help me. And so, God said, I I want to give them a law that they can please me. I want to give them a law that will protect me. The Ten Commandments wasn't a a bunch of thou shalt not negatives, but it was thou shalt not positive. Think about how God loved us to tell us there is no other God beside me. I don't want you wasting your time looking for another God. There is no other God beside me. Why? I don't want you... I want want you to be a people of truth because there is bondage in a lie. And I want you to be people of truth. So he he gave them that and then he gives to Moses the blueprints of this thing called the tabernacle. Over and over again, Brother Voskis, God was saying to Moses, see that you make it just like I showed it to you in the mount. You gotta, you gotta make this structure because this just isn't any structure. This is a structure that I will dwell among them. But God not only wanted to dwell among us, but God wanted to have a way that we could come back into His presence. And so, hallelujah, He put together this beautiful tabernacle structure. But as he began to tell them what was needed in the tabernacle, he began to tell them in detail about boards. A board that would be 15 feet high, 2 foot 3 inches wide. He told them that each board, each board, and there were several of them, individual boards, individual boards. But these boards would be taken 
and tenions and unions would be placed upon these boards. These boards would be connected to other boards. These boards would be connected. And not only that, these boards would set down in sockets of silver. Silver would lay on the desert floor and the boards would be placed down in the silver sockets and the boards would be fitted together board to board, piece to piece. I'm so thankful tonight as I see the typology that for 70 years it started out as a handful of people. It started out with someone getting the revelation but it didn't stop there. Board was added to board. and People found strength. Can I, can I tell you something? There is strength when we're joined to one another. You, you know why we're here tonight? There's been 70 years of apostolic believers saying, I, I, I'm going to be joined. I, I don't care if the wind is blowing. I'm going to be joined to you. I don't care if the rain is coming down. I'm going to be joined to you. You know as well as I have, 70 years there's been some ups and downs. 70 years there's been some sideways. There's been some funerals that came out of nowhere. There's been some tragedies that came out of nowhere. But thank God somehow we were connected to one another and we stood. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Biggest, the biggest battle you'll take, it's not about your trial, it's about your separation. Too many people get in a trial and they get their mind on the trial and not the purpose of the trial. The purpose of the trial is to separate you from the other board. The purpose of the trial is to sever you away from the church. Because the enemy knows he doesn't have a good chance as long as you are tethered to some other board and connected to some other board. He, he knows that you don't, he don't have a lot of chance. The apostolic church structure. These boards 15 feet high, two, two feet, three inches wide. The tenions that connected them together, the sockets that they went down into. But then... The sockets on the, the, the boards on the bottom were to be connected. There was tenions to connect them. But I began to read in verses 23 and 24 of chapter 26 again that the Bible says, and there and two boards shalt thou make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. In other words, the corner boards were to be different. They shall be coupled together beneath. That's like every other board is coupled beneath. And they shall be coupled together above the head of it unto it. In other words, the strength of the structure lie in the corner boards. It was the corner boards that had more than just a connecting at the bottom. But the corner boards had a connection on the bottom and on the top. Something about the corners of that tabernacle that kept strength and kept unity and kept stability. Can I tell you that the apostolic church is built upon the rock and the gates of hell have never, have never, and shall never prevail against the church. There has always been since Pentecost and there will be to the rapture an apostolic church. Did you hear what's going on? I don't need to hear what's going on. Up on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not. I wish somebody would say shall not. Shall not. I'm glad to be in an apostolic church. I said, I'm glad to be in an apostolic church. Oh, let me tell you something, friend. You don't ever have to wonder. You may be seated. 
You don't ever have to wonder when we have our general ministry conference and we're making business and doing business for the assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ. None of our members have ever wrung their hands waiting for the election to see if we're going to put a homosexual in the pulpit. Oh, friend, there's a lot of things you're never going to have to worry about because you are in an apostolic Jesus name. Pentecostal church. There ain't going to be two men up here. There ain't going to be two women up here. Can I tell you, it's an apostolic church. It's a blood-bought church. You won't have to wonder, are we taking blood out of the plan? Are we taking water out of the plan? I got, I'll tell you something else. Don't you ever worry about holiness either because we're not leaving holiness. We're going to keep on don't you ever have to worry. Lord, help me. You, you may be seated. You may be seated. A- am I doing all right tonight? A corner, a corner is where you make a turn. That's a turn. A corner is a turn. People say there's a lot of things turning. Yeah, but you got to realize our turns lead us right back to where we started. Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is our chief cornerstone. You know what holds this church together? J-E-S-U-S. You know what holds this church together? 2,000 years ago, Almighty God overshadowed a virgin girl. She gave birth not to Jehovah Junior. She gave birth not to the second person, but she gave birth to the Son of the living God. He was Almighty God. Can I tell you something? Let Washington change. Let our culture change. But we'll still be marching on because we are the apostolic church. Jesus Christ is our chief cornerstone. Give him some praise right now. Lift up the name of Jesus right now. I'm glad to be in the apostolic church. I'm glad to be an apostolic. Jesus. Jesus. Something about the corners. The corners were not only secure at the foot, but they were secure on the foot and the head because the corners gave stability and strength to the whole building. Something about the corners. Something about the corners. There's strength in our corners. I said there's strength in our corners. There's strength in our corners. Leviticus starts off in Leviticus 23, and I feel my helper coming on tonight. Leviticus 23, 15. This is Pentecost. This is Pentecost coming on. Leviticus 23, 15. Ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days and you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. This is Pentecost. This is the scripture that tells us about Pentecost. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost. But something else was going to happen at Pentecost. Go all the way down to verse number 21. Leviticus 23. This is connected to Pentecost. And ye, verse 21, and ye shall proclaim on the self same day, somebody say Pentecost. Pentecost. And you shall proclaim on the self same day, say it, Pentecost, that it may be a holy convocation unto you. You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when you reap the harvest of your land, Pentecost, Thou shalt not make clean radius of the corners of the field when thou reapest. Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thine harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord. The Lord said 
He said, Pentecost is coming. Tongues of fire are going to come on Jerusalem. Tongues of fire is going to come through North Mississippi. Somebody over yonder is going to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues. Seventy years ago, seventy years ago, somebody in a sweaty brush harbor got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But that ain't all that happened. Oh, my God. My God, I feel it coming on tonight because this is the apostolic church structure. I feel Pentecost a-brewing tonight. I feel the winds a-blowing tonight. I feel, I wonder. Come on, help me pass some of these out tonight. I feel the winds a-blowing tonight. I feel the winds blowing tonight. I feel the wind, no doubt, no doubt. You may be seated. No doubt, Bishop Wilson. No doubt, Bishop Bishop. They went to those brush arbor. They went to them and they felt the winds of blowing. They felt the winds blowing on them. And Pentecost came to North Mississippi. Pentecost came to this part of the world. But Pentecost not only came to this part of the world. The blessings of Pentecost came to this part of the world. You got a field to reap because of Pentecost. Oh, we sat in that lovely banquet last night. My wife and I, listen to us. Listen to me tonight. My wife and I, who are first generation apostolic Pentecostals. For we're first generation. Oh, we sat there last night. We watched the, 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 the presentation of the uh, brother and sister Hall up in Walnut. And we watched the presentation of the Wilson brothers. And we saw pictures of men such as uh, 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 J.T. Payne. And, and, and we saw pictures of, uh, of, of uh, Bishop L.A. Perrin. And, and we saw pictures of uh, Brother Mayo. And, 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 and the, the legacy. Some of you are, are kin to kin to kin. Some of you, you didn't get into Pentecost. You were born into Pentecost. Some of you got your great grandmothers in Pentecost. Some of you, 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 you didn't get in Pentecost. Pentecost was in you before you got in it. But can I tell you something about a Pentecostal church in North Mississippi? When God gives us Pentecost, He says, don't mess with the corners. He said, I want you to leave the corners. Why? For the poor and the stranger. He said, there's going to be a, a little old 16 year old boy that's going to be messed up. He don't have a last name, but he's going to get over there in the corner. Can I tell you, you don't have to have a pedigree. You don't have to have a last name. Pentecost has got a corner for you. We got a corner open for you. That's what Pentecost has got. My God. Well, y'all can sit down. I'm about to have a fit. Somebody said, I heard you apostolics have fits. I said, we do, benefits. Can I tell you, I'm glad I'm in the, in the corner. I'm glad I got in the church and they didn't look at me when I walked down the aisle in my PF flyer tennis shoes and my Levi jeans and my little old muscle shirt without sleeves in it and my little old long hair. I'm glad people didn't look at me and think, he don't look like us. He, 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 who is he? Whose son is he? He said, I don't know, but that boy just went to the altar. Let's go pray him through. I'm talking about the apostolic church. I'm talking about the apostolic church. Structure. 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 I'm going to tell you something. You may be seated. Revelation, Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, verse number 1. Watch this. And after these things, Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow. Can I tell you something? The wind is coming from the four corners. Because we got structure. We got structure in this church. Can I tell you? You cannot have prosperity without structure. Do you want to be made whole? Get structure in your life. 
Do you want God to make you whole tonight? Submit yourself to structure. Oh, I don't like that word submit. Well, you can't be part of the structure. You can't even be part of the structure if you don't submit. Somebody say structure. Say it again. Say it again. Structure. Structure. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 7 and 1. Second Chronicles 7 and 1. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. Can I tell you, God always will fill structure. God is in to structure. Now what's interesting, God help me not get sidetracked here, is that chapter 6 and 5, they had already had a praise from the Levites. And the glory filled the house. But it wasn't until a man stepped up with structure that fire filled the house. See, some folks just want to come to a singing, but they don't want any structure. They want us to tell them about one day after a while we're going to a mansion in the sky. That's good, sir, but you're going to have to come to church and you're going to have to hear about structure if you plan to get there. I'm not... I'm I'm not the originator of this and I can't really remember who I heard say it but I heard this. Saul loved David's music but he didn't like Samuel's word. I love this choir tonight but I guarantee you I know a little bit about this choir. Not just anybody's getting in this choir. I guarantee you this choir's got some standards put to it. Well, why you want to do that? Just let anybody sing. God just doesn't feel anybody. But he feels structure. Now some people believe that if they can do away with structure, they'll get more people. You might get more people, but you won't get more of God. If you want more of God, let God draw the people. You just have the structure and God will have Lord have mercy. Y'all, y'all just be seated. I, I, oh Lord, sometimes I ask permission if I can tell certain stories, especially when they involve my wife. She's been with me almost 38 years. I don't believe she'll leave me by morning. But Sister Wilson, she was our first choir director. Our first choir director. We put together a little choir man in the church built some little risers that our our choir could our choir we did we we, back then and i i'm not musically inclined but we didn't even clap the way everybody else claps we clapped on on the we clapped on the only i take our folks to youth rally and and there was only ones in that pentecost church blam 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 blam. that's carpenters folks we start the choir my mother-in-law, her mother, wanted to join the choir. They were a little handbook. She said she could obey it. But she had certain jewelry that had been an heirloom. Somebody had passed down and just means so much to me when I wear this certain jewelry. Well, what do you do? Do you let down the structure? Because if you let it down for your family, you gotta let it down for everybody else. Now we're going back. We're going back, Brother Austin Hughes, over 35 years ago, we're going back that far. But my wife had to tell her mother, 
You can't sing in the choir anymore. Oh, that's mean. Hey, mean. That's structure. That's his structure. You see, if you want to have something God is in, be willing for structure to be upon your life. You want a miracle? Get ready for structure. Fill the water pots with water. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. If you want that miracle, be ready for it. 35 years later, my mother in law still in church, still worshiping God. One of the best saints we got in our church right now. That little old choir has grown into a It's a a church almost up there. But it's structure. The Bible said, let me get back to my text. The Bible said in 2 Chronicles 7 2, the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because of the glory of the Lord had filled the house. When all the children saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves upon their faces to the ground and to the pavement and worshiped and praised God. I wish somebody would say, Structure. For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Shout structure. Structure. And the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Somebody shout structure. Structure. It goes all the way through David or Solomon. He he, he halloweds the middle court. He makes sacrifice there. Somebody say structure. Structure. Uh, On the eighth day, verse 9, on the eighth day they made a solemn assembly. For they kept, somebody say structure. For they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents, glad, merry in heart, for the goodness that the Lord had showed unto David. David's not there anymore. And to Solomon. Solomon was there. God's being good to us tonight because of the men and women that are not here. And the men and women that are here. That presentation on the screen. Many of them is in the graveyard out here. Many of them are sprinkled around. But God says, I'm good to you because of David. I'm I'm good to you because of, of David. And I'm good to you. Somebody say structure. 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 Well, I'm not done. Verse number 11. The Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to men. And in his life, say structure, he prosperously affected. He prosperously affected. Stop listening to this cheap stuff of prosperity without structure. There's no such thing as prosperity without structure. But if you'll get structure in your life, open up the windows because prosperity is coming your way. You know why we're celebrating 38 years of marriage? Because we've been structured. We pray, that structure. We go to church, that structure. We worship God, that structure. We believe in one God, that is structure. We don't take a break from God. We don't have one wardrobe at church and another wardrobe at home. We don't take a break away from the house of God. We don't take a break away from tithing. We don't take a break away from worship because it's structure. It's our structure. Now I know that's not the cool cutting edge. I know there may not be a seminar somewhere that will tell you how to grow your church, but that's how you'll grow a church. That's how you'll have 70 years of uninterrupted apostolic doctrine. Somebody had structure. We didn't wait for our kids to get in the first grade to start teaching them to pray. We didn't wait for them to get in the first grade to start teaching them what they ought to wear. 
We didn't get in the first grade and start telling them, well, listen, we don't even go do that junk. We don't even go down that junk. Uh, uh, have they chosen their, uh, have their, chosen their, their, their sexual uh, orientation? Are, are you an idiot? Open up their diaper. That ought to tell you how they are. Can you even believe I'm having to say this? But a world is taking structure away. The world is taking structure. I'm glad I'm in the apostolic church. I'm, I'm, oh my God. I'm, my God, I'm just going to shout a little bit because I'm glad I'm in the apostolic church. I'm glad I'm in this church. Maybe seated. Jeremiah 12 and 9. Jeremiah 12 and 9. My heritage. That's what North Mississippi is. You know who you are tonight? Oh, you go by the title assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ. But can I tell you who you really are? You're his heritage. Yes, yes. You're his heritage. He likes to show you off. Because you're the people of structure. He loves to show you off. Because you're the people of structure. Listen to Jeremiah. My heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about her are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, devour her. I tell you something, likening churches to birds. We an odd duck in this world, aren't we? If the world fits you, you're the wrong size is all I can say. Ellie, we an odd duck in this world, girl. We an odd duck in this world. They, they look at us and they size us up. And, and, and some of them even say, well, you, you'll one day prosper like we have. And we used to look like you all. And we used to act like you all. And, and we, we, used, we used to do that. But one of these days, your preachers will get educated. And, and you'll get a bigger building across town. And, and when you do, you'll start looking like, oh, aren't you glad? We're proven to a world. We're not going to be. We're not going to be like that. You may be seated. The other day, I, brother, we had some celebration at the church. Brother Voskis and Brother Erickson felt like he, he, uh, he wrote letters to judges and mayors and everybody to come to the celebration, you know, and, 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 and uh, I didn't even know the, the mayor was going to be there. I walked in the office and there stood the mayor. And, and uh, he, 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 he said, uh, he said, I'm so glad to be at your uh, celebration. I forget what it was, celebration. I, I'm so glad that, to be here at your uh, celebration. Momentous celebration. That's where I got that word from. Momentous. I thought it sounded good for the mayor. It said, momentous celebration. And, and I said, yeah. That sounded, and then you look at the dictionary. Momentous, momentous. He said, but now. I, I must inform you that uh, I, I, I've got to have the floor early. I, I have another uh, place to go make a presentation. And uh, so I'll be leaving. I, I, I need the floor. He's talking to Brother Eric. So I, I'll need the floor. It's early. And please have me excused. And, and uh, Chad said, well, we are opening up with a, the choir is going to sing. And said immediately after the choir sings, Mr. Mayor, we'll put you up on the floor. The choir started singing. And the corner started blowing. I look at the old mayor out of the corner of mine. He had his hanky out. And then old brother so and so come bouncing out of the choir around the building. Mayor looked around. I said, "It's all right. It's all right. He's all right. He's all right." And somebody, somebody got to got to doing. Oh, hey, hey, got the power of God. Got the moving. The old mayor started looking around. 
And finally the choir settled down and the mayor got up and he walked up so help me God. He walked up and he said, well, he, he said, uh, he said uh, I got a little something I need to read here on behalf of all the city officials and on behalf of the judges and on behalf and we welcome you and we thank you for this thing. And then he just took his papers, didn't he? He said, Carpenter, and he threw it away and he said, I wasn't expecting this. He said, my wife told me, he said, you're going down to that apostolic church. said, something might happen to you today. And he got to talking about morals. He got to talking about righteous living. And he said, you know what? I'm supposed to be out. I'm supposed to leave here and go to Morristown. But I'm going to stay for the whole service. The service went two hours. And the mayor was still there. Come on. We're a great speckled bird. But that's what makes us peculiar. That's what makes us peculiar. We, my God. That's what makes us peculiar. That's what makes us peculiar. Come on, church. Listen to this. Just, just be seated for a minute. I'm, I'm gonna quit. I promise. My God, I don't. I don't really think that. I don't really think this is gonna hit the charts. I don't really think that Hill Song or, or, or Fallon Song gonna get it. I, but I come across a song the other day, and it goes like this: What a beautiful thought I am thinking. Concerning a great speckled bird. Remember her name is recorded on the pages of God's holy word. All the other birds are flocking around her. She is despised by the squad. But the great speckled bird in the Bible is one with the great church of God. All the other churches are against her. They envy her glory and fame. They they hate her because she is chosen and has not denied Jesus' name. Desiring to lower her standard. They watch every move that she makes. They long to find fault with her teaching. But really they find no mistake. I'm glad to be that great speckled. She is spreading her wings for a journey. She is going to leave by and by. When the trumpet shall sound in the morning, she'll rise and go up in the sky. I'm glad to be a part of that great speckle. Stand with me right now. Yay! Yay! Hallelujah! Yay! Hallelujah! Yay! Hallelujah! Oh! I wonder how many young men would come get a fan and just go marching around this building. I wonder how many young men will carry the torch. Go ahead, form a victory line. Go ahead, march around the building. This is our future. This is our future right here. This is where we're at. We're not dying. We're not a dying breed. This is where we're at. We're the church of the living God. We've got boards and sockets and we've got corners. We're a part of the grave. God. Musicians come. My God. The structure of the apostolic church. If you give your pastor a hard time for preaching holiness, find him before the night and say, Pastor, get to preaching it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. wants to sit down on us tonight I believe the Lord wants to sit down on structure tonight 
I believe he wants to sit down on structure tonight. He'll never feel an empty building. He'll never feel an empty altar. I feel the Holy Ghost. Would you just help me right now? All over this building. Come on. Come on, if you're glad to be in the structure, make your way to the altar right now. If you're glad to be a part of the structure, make your way to the altar right now. Your world is falling apart. You're bound by habits of sin and shame. Structure will set you free. Structure. 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 Lift your voice up. I I wish I felt released to let go of this microphone right now. I wish I felt released. Come on, structure. Some of you got out of the choir at your church. You need to get back in that choir. Some of you got out of some of you got out of being in position at your church. You need to go to that pastor tonight and say, Pastor, I'm going to obey whatever you tell me. Just one more moment. I, I just don't feel a release right now. I'm sorry. I, I... Structure. 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 My mind, my mind right now is is upon a. My mind right now is upon a marriage. Marriages, plural. Marriages, plural. If hell wants to do anything, he wants to separate our marriage. But can I tell you the real reason he wants to separate our marriage? There is one letter that is missing from the Hebrew word man. There's one letter that's missing from his name that the woman has in her name. And there's a letter missing from the woman, the Hebrew woman, that the Hebrew man has. The letter missing from the man is the letter Yah. The woman has it. The letter missing from the woman that the man has is Yah. You put man and woman together and you have Yah. Way. That's why hell fights it. That's why we're in a corrupt culture of so called gender identity crisis. Hell wants to eradicate anything that reminds him of God.
Bishop, Bishop, Bishop Steve Wilson. You know what they've represented in their marriage? Yahweh. Can I tell you, you have a battle on your hands. Even if you have Yahweh, but you won't have an open door in your life. Satan is raping our children left and right because our, our homes are lacking in the full identity of Yahweh. When a man and a woman are in a healthy relationship with God and they're raising their children, a man has one symbol that he beckons God for worship. He lifts up his hands as if he has two antennas. And he's saying, God, come down here. This is my house, God. Come down here in my life, God. On the other hand, if he's got a wife that understands the biblical meaning of hair on a woman, and that woman has not cut her hair, the Bible says, for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angel. So you know what happens in my house? I'm putting two antennas up saying, God, come on down. Come on down in my life. Come on down in my family. Come on down on my children. Come on down on my grandchildren. Why my wife walks around saying, devil, not in this house. Not around here. You're not coming in this house. Structure, 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 structure. Just one more time. God wants to heal. God wants to heal. I heard your superintendent say miracle signs and wonders. Can I tell you something? Healing flows through the body when we are at one. Healing does not flow where there is division. You cannot hate your brother and get healed by the master at the same time. So right now, as individuals, as individuals, let's lift up our hands right now. Come on, all over this place. God, on this first night of this 70th anniversary, I clean my heart out, God, before you. God, my heart is deceitfully wicked above all things and no man can know it. God, as far as I know, I don't have all against anybody in this room. Or I don't have all against anybody that I know of, God. Come on, right now, you've got to pray that prayer. There's no healing without this prayer. There's no prayer answers without this prayer. You've got to have this healed right now. You've got to have it healed right now. God wants to heal you and deliver you. God wants to break a bondage off of your life. God wants to set you free. Yes, tonight. But you have got to yield yourself. You have got to yield yourself to structure. 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 Now, if it would be appropriate, man to man and woman to woman, but would you put your hand over on somebody right now? There's going to be a there's going to be a surge of the power and the presence of God flow through here. There's going to be a surge of the power of God. Someone that is discouraged is going to be encouraged right now. Someone that is down is going to receive that healing right now. Come on, right now. Go ahead, pray it. Pray it right now. It's structure. It's structure. It's structure. Pray right now. Pray right now. Pray right now. It's your night. It's your night. It's structure. 
You've been coming around the church for a long time. Be healed of your bitterness. Be healed of your unforgiveness. Be healed of your attitude. Be healed. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, the healing's right here. Come on, the healing's right here. You're getting healed right now. God is healing some things in your life right now. God is healing some damaged emotions. You're gonna laugh again. You're gonna smile again. You're gonna rejoice again. Like oil upon my feet, like wine for you to drink, like water from my heart, I pour my love on you. The praise is my perfume. I lavish mine on you until every drop is gone. I pour my love on you. got anything in my heart toward, toward my brother, my family, anybody, is if I cannot pray for them, if I cannot pray for my brother or my sister, 
there's something in my heart and I need to go make it right with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray for that very one that has hurt you because God wants to do something like we've never seen in this place tonight. I've never heard a message like that before. It's done something to me. It's touched me deep. God said, I want to move in this place. So I want you to pray for your enemy. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Pray for your family that's made fun of you. That's talked about you. Would you right now, would you start praying for your, bro- your brothers? Praying for those that have hurt you. Pray for them. Pray for them right now. God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Help them, God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God touch you tonight. Jesus. Your praise is like perfume. I'm a smile on you until every drop is gone. I pour my love. On you, yeah, I my love on you. Yeah. Well, this is the way I worship. This is the way I love you. This is the way.
hands all over the room right now and lift our voices higher than our hands. Come on, why don't you give the Lord some praise right now? Give him the fruit of your lips, which is giving thanks unto his name. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, O oh God. We magnify you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Come on, lift up a shout of praise tonight. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. What a word tonight from Bishop Carpenter. I'm thankful that we have we are a part of the apostolic church that still has structure. That we're not leaving the one God message. We're not leaving Jesus' name baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And we're not leaving holiness. Uh, we've got to have structure. Thank you, Jesus. Are you thankful for the word tonight? Come on, are you thankful for the word tonight? Thankful for the ministry of Bishop Carpenter, willing to continually preach the absolute apostolic doctrine. Amen. Why don't we lift our hands in the room? Why don't you put your other hand on your chest and say, Lord, seal this word in my heart. God, let it be sown into good ground that it will bring forth much fruit, O oh God. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold in the name of Jesus. I pray it not be cast along the, the thorny ground or along the wayside or upon stony ground, but let it be sown into good ground, O oh God, that it will be, bring forth much fruit. God, we want to be fruitful in your name and it will not happen unless we have structure. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd seal it in our hearts and sear it in our minds, oh God, and let us never leave this word of the Lord. We thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's clap our hands one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What a service and what a message. Amen. Are you ready for tomorrow night? Tomorrow night we're going to have Brother David Poole preaching. It's going to be an amazing time in the Lord. And right now, right before we dismiss, I just want you to know we have dinner prepared for you over in the new building, the S&P Wilson Center and the gymnasium. You're welcome to come join us and have fellowship over there. You may be dismissed today in the name of Jesus.